Here I work on fixing the water glitches in the geometry. I narrowed the river width and manually adjusted vertices to fit the slopes. While not ideal, I was confident in the river's shape by this point, so I didn't expect any major changes. The manual adjustments were quick and uh, I kept all the modifiers below intact. If I decide to tweak the shape later, I can simply remove the editable poly modifier and redo the vertex adjustments. Let's talk about water in CG, as it's often misunderstood. Many artists simply rely on a BAP displacement map on the water surface shader and call it done. While this can work in simplified scenarios like the middle of an ocean, it often falls short for more complex environments. Water is incredibly dynamic, influenced by external factors like wind turbulence above and uh, different elevations of the terrain beneath the surface. So this creates non-uniform appearance that can make or break the realism of your scene. One of the key things to remember is that water rarely looks the same across the entire surface. You'll typically see areas with heavier ripples, sections that are calmer, and sometimes patches that are completely still. For this reason, our shader needs to reflect this variability while maintaining a cohesive and natural look. The goal is not the randomness for the sake of randomness, you know. It's about controlled variety that feels believable and suits the scene environment. Another aspect is to consider the distance. From a visual standpoint, water tends to appear rougher and less details the further it is from the viewer. This effect is both an optical illusion and a result of atmospheric conditions. We will aim to replicate this by using the gradient ramp shader and because we use the line we have the coordinate so we can make it rougher the further it is from the camera. Now as you can see I'm just using the standard water shader from the V-Ray presets I'm just putting the noise in BAMP, see what I can get. And I'm adjusting the tiling so that it feels a little bit more anisotropic to give it a sense of a direction. Now of course it's way too strong and we need a variation so we're gonna use the composite map. And I like to use the mid gray base for this, so 0.5 very color and layer different noises and masks on top of it. And I will switch to displacement map later on because I felt like it wasn't enough for this river to feel alive. Here you can see I'm gonna use a masking technique to make it appear only in certain areas of the river.
So it's not the amount of different noises that you're gonna use. You can make everything in a single map. The goal is to make it look and feel natural and not just a simple noise all over the place. Here, here you can see I'm gonna adjust the fogness of our river and I'm gonna make it more muddy rather than ocean And you can see right now it's cl crystal clear because the depth is just strong. And I felt like this was enough for now. Now I lower it there. Uh, reflection amount because water usually not a hundred percent reflective material I'm gonna create a second channel UV map from the top and I'm gonna put a gradient on top of it <clears throat> There's a mix of two very colors because it's easier to control the values from the very color And you can use, just use the RGB multiplier and putting it into glossiness to control how rough it is from the camera. So I'm going from 0.95 to at the end I think it was 0.9 or 0.85 because it's, it was way too rough as of right now like 0.75 makes it pretty rough Here you can see I'm using the same composite map on a displacement modifier. And I'm gonna adjust the values one last time the intensities 